welcome everyone to this webinar. It's the first in another two-part series around uh, Kubernetes. Uh, this time we're talking about Kubernetes tools, specifically tools for end users. In this webinar, we're talking about Helm. So the plan for this webinar is to get you familiar with Helm and how you can use it and what it is and why it's such an important part of the Kubernetes uh, ecosystem. And we'll do that by going through a demo. I have prepared a short technical demo, walk you through Helm and what you can do. And then we'll have a 50, you know, roughly 10, 15 minutes for Q&A at the end. So during the webinar, please collect all of your questions and dump them into, uh, into the chat. So my name is Adam Hawkins. I run the site reliability engineering team at SaltSite. We have roughly 50, 350 containers in production right now. I've been using Docker for quite some time. And we are currently undergoing a migration away from our custom homegrown Docker solution to a Kubernetes uh, infrastructure and using Helm to deploy all of our applications. I've also created the introduction to Docker course for Cloud Academy and also the introduction to Kubernetes course, which is coming out soon. If you want, you can find more about me uh, at Twitter or on my blog. To assume some familiarity with Kubernetes because Helm is a package manager for Kubernetes. In order to work with Helm, you have to have some understanding of Kubernetes. That's not necessarily so important for this particular session. I'll do my best to fill in uh, some of those bits. And I, for the rest of you who have not used Helm, then I think this is the perfect uh, session, the perfect webinar for you to get acquainted with it. So what I'm going to talk about is first packaging applications into charts. So uh, in Helm terminology, a chart is a combination of all the different Kubernetes resources that make up an application. Um, this might be like a microservice application, a monolith application, any type of thing that you may want to run on Kubernetes. Those, this is a combination of all of your deployments, all of your services, maybe all of your volumes, all the things that you would be writing, like all of these YAML files that you would be managing with QTTL, you can do in, with, and package them all up into what we call a chart and manage them through Helm. So what we'll do is we will build an example chart We'll install that chart on our cluster and talk about some of the workflows and features around working with charts. So that's all we have for the presentation. Now what we're going to do is switch over to the terminal. I'm going to walk through, uh, you know, demonstrate building some charts and actually working with these tools. Now what I would like to show you is first I have started off by preparing some Kubernetes deployments and services. So for those of you who have never actually used Kubernetes, a deployment is configuration to run containers and scale them in that configuration. So in this case, I have created uh, three deployments in one YAML file for this sample application. The sample application is just kind of a, a counter uh, type application where we have one, one uh, server container that stores a counter in Redis and another container that runs in a loop that continually makes an API request back to the server to increment the counter, and then another container that runs continually that makes a GET request to retrieve the counter and print it out. So we have one deployment here for the data tier, which is Redis, and another for the application tier, where we run the, the server, and we connect this up to Redis, and then another deployment called the support tier, which contains the counter container connected to the API server and the polar connected to the API server. Now, I've also created a service to expose the, uh, the Redis container to the uh, server and the app tier to expose the server to the counter and polar. So this is low-level details. It's not so exactly important for this particular session, but it's good to understand at a very high level what we're going to put into this chart. So if I wanted to, I could, of course, create these things with QTTL. 
to create the services first, and then I can create the deployments. But the thing around this is we probably want to be able to package these things up and work with them uh, as a group rather than just as individual files. And as we evolve, say, the configuration between the services and the deployments, these things have to be kept in sync. And this is what we can do with a Helm chart. So a Helm chart is really just a collection of these files. Let me just quickly switch my directory. So you can see that we have this deployments.yml file, which is this stuff, and services.yml. So if I want to package these all into a chart, all I need to do is say helm create. This will create the template directory structure for working on the chart. So I'll call mine demo. And that creates a demo directory in the current directory. So now, uh, oops, I was in the wrong directory when I ran that command. Just delete it. Go here. All right, now I'm back in the correct part one folder. So helm create demo. And now if we refresh, we can see that Helm has created this structure where we have a, a templates directory. This contains some pre-generated YAML files for us, uh, a chart definition, which filled in the name here, and also the version of this chart. So unlike working with these YAML files directly, we can version combinations of all these things. These versions follow a semantic versioning. So if we make a new release of our application, maybe we would bump the patch number to this, depending on the changes inside, maybe we bump the major or bump the minor, you get the idea. So now what I'll do is I'm going to just delete some of these files that are auto-generated because I want to show you what it's like to actually create a chart from scratch. So the most basic chart, or easily all of these YAML files that we put inside templates will be, make it into the final version of the chart. So Helm actually is a passes, or what Helm passes all of our YAML files through templates. So if we look here, let's just copy these into demo it, templates, okay, and copy this one into demo templates services. So now we just move the same thing into this chart. Now that would be enough to start installing it. So now that I have some of this content, I can install it. So I say Helm. No, yeah. So Helm install. Now this command requires at least one argument, which is the chart name. A chart name can be either the location of a directory on the file system, uh, a name of a chart from a chart repository. We'll talk about that later. Or the path to a prepackaged chart in a tar archive. So right now, since we have a directory on our file system, we can just tell it to install uh, from this directory. So say dash demo. Okay, so release, okay, this is my bad. I have to clean up some of this stuff. Let me, uh, This is from me creating the things manually and I'm trying to create them with the chart. So let me just clean up my mess. Let's also clean up the services.
Now, let's try this again. So now if I install it, all right. So what Helm has done is pass through all of our templates and just forward them to the Kubernetes API. So in this case, it's created our deployments and the services. I have made a mistake when I write this chart because we have not followed the exact semantics of writing charts. I did this on purpose because I wanted to demonstrate this. So when you install a chart, it gives you a name. This is called a release name. So when you install a chart, you create a release. This is because charts may be reused multiple times. So for example, let's say that you create a chart for, or you have a chart for MySQL or Redis or any of these kind of databases. It's quite safe to assume that you may want to reuse that chart for one application. You know, you're going to install MySQL for application B and MySQL for application B. This is where the release names come in. So I have a name called Yellow Gopher. You can list all of the releases by just saying Helm list. Now we have one called Yellow Gopher on revision two. So Helm is also tracking all of the changes to these releases. And if you want, you can roll back to a particular revision of a given release. You also see the status, what chart it is, and the version. So here's the name and the version, and the Kubernetes namespace it's, it's deployed into. So if I wanted to deploy this chart again, I could, but I've not actually done the correct things in my templates to ensure that the names of all the things in my chart are being uh, handled correctly. So given I just copied this directly, what we need to do is edit it in some way to handle like unique naming. So the way to do this is to use these built-in helpers. So when you create a new Helm chart, it's going to generate these, this uh, helpers file, which contains two useful things. One is the, the name of the chart, and the other is the full name. So this is the release name. So if you have to name something, you need to include the release name. That way it can be reused across multiple installations of a given chart. So to fix this problem, we need to come back to our, say, deployments files and update these things. Now, each of these YAML files inside the temperature, not YAML files, but actually all of the files inside the templates directory are passed through Helm's template language, template language which is Go templates. So we can use these things. So example dates here, what we want to do, which is prefix this with say, template full name, like that. And da, da, da. Now let's fix the names of the other deployments. So we can kill the example also. Okay. Oops. So now we have to just change the name for the services. We probably also want to include this in the selectors also. So we can say so we only hit things that are covered by this particular chart. Okay. 
Can also delete these ones. Can kill that. Don't need it. We don't need app anymore because we can refer to the chart. Now I hope I got this template right. Let's see what happens. Unexpected. Okay. This is just a flub on my part. Let me, I can't remember if the dot comes first. Yeah. So this is on line number five. Let's just switch this. Let's see if that. Yep. Sorry about that. Just go and fix all of this. Service of my number 20. Okay, this one. Okay, so forgive me for that flub. Ta da! So now what you can see is that it has, Helm has inserted our release name and the chart and all of this stuff into uh, the names. So now we are sort of unique file our things. So Helm also allows you to predefine certain parameters that go in with your particular chart. So for example, let's say that you wanted to customize the number of replicas in the deployment. So in this case, let's look at, here is the app tier, so the number of app servers. Let's say we wanted to have a value for this. So what we do is come back over to this values file. So this was content that was actually pre-generated. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kill this for now. We fill in our own value. Let's call it app, no, yeah, app tier replicas. Let's call it five. Now what we can do is call yeah, values app tier Replicas. So this values file is sort of the default parameters for all of the charts that, or not the, all of the charts, but the chart that we're working with. So these are the defaults. So I can use what's in there when I install it, or I can provide my own values or even my own values files when I install or upgrade a particular chart. So now, if everything is, yep. Fix that spelling here. So app tier replicas, app tier replicas. Got it. Okay, so now if I were to install it, I now have a new release running a different number of replicas. So now if I want to install one that's say Running more, I can use dash dash set app tier replicas say equal to three, and now I have three. So this is just an example of how you can customize the sort of charts, the different values that would you'd use at installation time. So let's give some context around how this could be useful. Let's consider you're building a chart for um, you know, for your application. Maybe when you install it, you have an, you know, a, a value called environment. So when you install it, you set your environment equal to staging. 
or you set your environment equal to production. You can use these values to also even do more complex control flow inside your, uh, in your templates. I mean, Helm gives you uh, simple if conditions, you can have loops, things of that nature. So you could consider a situation where, okay, if I'm running in, if, if this value is set to production, then I'm gonna add some extra configuration, or maybe I will include some new things, or well, you know, can do different things based off of these values. So let's say now I am ready to say release a new version of my chart. All I need to do is come over here to the chart.yaml file and bump the version. So now I have a new version of this. I can change these values if I wanted to. Also, any content that goes into the chart will be pre-built with this version. So I can check my releases. Now let's say I want to deploy something. So let's upgrade this one. So I say Helm upgrade. Now this takes two arguments, a release name and chart. So it's a Helm upgrade Jazzy Macaw and demo. So Helm release Jazzy Macaw has been upgraded, namespace default, now running version 1.0. So you can also get the content of a particular release at a particular revision. So let's take this, say Helm get Jazzy Macaw, and this shows you the full, what they call the manifest for a particular chart, which is the list of, well, the name of the chart and the version, the user provide values, so this is what had been fired on the command line, either the set or by changing the values. Uh, so computed values, so the, the defaults, and the full list of all of the generated YAML after passing the values to the templates of all of the things that we've defined. So you can inspect these things. So if we come back to Jazzy Macaw, we know that Jazzy Macaw is on two revisions. So if we do this, we can pass revision two and get that. So let's consider that this one failed and now we actually want to roll back to the previous one. There's a command for that also. We get the helm, helm, rollback. So this takes two arguments, which is the release name and the revision number. So Helm rollback Jesse Macaw one. All right, let's see. Okay, two Z's. So now it's been rolled back, which has created the third revision of this particular release, which we can see by doing Helm list, so revision three. So Helm also includes support for chart repositories. So if we wanted to share this chart with somebody else, we could give them, um, uh, say, this directory, or we can actually package it up as, as a tar file. So if we say Helm package, that's okay. This takes at least one argument, which is the path to the chart. So Helm package demo. Now what has this generated? It's generated demo dot, you know, the name of our chart, or the version of our chart dot tar dot gz, or t dot gz. So now what we can do is upload this to a repo server and pull it back in with repos. So by default, Helm has they call kind of like the user-generated stable repository. So if I say Helm search, this will just go through all of the repositories that Helm currently has. And here we have what's all that's in the stable repository. So you can get an idea, uh, like here you see there's Datadog, uh, 
Ghost, MongoDB, MySQL, PHPB, Postgres, Redis, these kind of things. So what you can do is you can create your own repository where you upload your package charts, those are those .tgz files that Helm generated, add your repository, and you can pull them back and install them on your, on your server or on your cluster. So one, reason, one way this is particularly useful is that Helm actually follows a client server model. So that Helm is uh, uh, yeah, sorry, I got a message from GoToWebinar. Uh, so Helm is running in a client server model where there is a pod or a container running on your cluster, which is actually the thing managing all of this stuff on the Kubernetes side called Tiller. Helm is actually just a client which talks to Tiller. So for example, if you have a cluster running uh, Tiller and I am uh, talking to that cluster with Helm and you also on your computer have Helm and access to the same cluster, then you and I can both independently manage each other those releases, install new charts, roll back or upgrade charts or upgrade releases. My bad. Uh, terminology flip there which makes it really quite powerful. So you can also use the Tiller APIs to uh, maybe integrate with some other deploy tooling outside of the Helm client itself. I mean, remember that given that this stuff is just client server, Helm is just an API client. So you can you know, hook up something with, say, uh, chat ops or hook it up in your deploy tooling, you know, however it is you want to go. Just think if there's any other commands that I want to show you before talking about some other features. Let's see, we said no, 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 no. Ah, yes. So dependency. We did not actually talk about this, but Helm charts can also declare dependencies and other charts in the same way that if you're working with, say, a package manager, a bundler, or uh, or you know, you're writing a library like a Ruby gem, you'll will say that, oh, my library also depends on these other libraries. You can do the same thing with charts. So if we come back to this Helm search, it's possible that instead of using, like creating my own deployment for Redis, what I actually want to depend on is the chart called stable Redis. And Helm will go through and make all that stuff, that stuff work. So you can see how this can be a really powerful way to manage complex applications on top of Kubernetes, especially when we're dealing with a lot of different configuration files. I mean, where I'm working right now, we have something like 25 different applications, and this is generating a lot of YAML files, and all of it has to be kept in sync. I think one, one area that Helm excels in is packaging up microservice applications or more distributed systems, because you can package up the whole thing as a chart give that chart off to anybody in your team or use that for production or however you want to do and just run and go. So I'm going to take a break from the terminal now and I want to talk about some other features uh, in or built into Helm through looking at the, the docs. All right. So Helm has the concept of hooks. Now, these are all. This is another really powerful feature for chart authors. So, what you can do is declare all of these hooks: pre-install, post-install, pre-delete, post-delete, pre-upgrade, post-upgrade, pre-rollback, and post-rollback, to call different Kubernetes to do different things during the whole lifecycle. So, for example, you could, before you install, maybe run a Kubernetes job or pod that checks that some things are available. Or say, before doing a pre-upgrade, maybe you run a command that will back up the data in some databases inside the release or whatever. You can also hook stuff up into pre-rollback and post-rollback. So I just wanted to show you a little bit about how this works. So what you do, so for writing a hook, you declare, so here we see more of the uh, YAML templates, right? So here's the, you know, the release name. So it's a kind job. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with Kubernetes, 
the job is you know, a list of things that should finish. So in this case, what they demonstrate is you can use the sleep command to wait, say, 10. So again, here's a reference to the values. Again, so the, the default provided value or a value provided at installation time. And the important thing is to hook it up with an annotation. So again, for those of you who are unfamiliar with Kubernetes, an annotation is a way to provide extra data about particular Kubernetes resources like jobs, deployment services, whatever, uh, that other actors in the system, Kubernetes itself, can use to bake in their own logic. So Helm will look for all of the things, you know, look over all of the things that it's created and find if they have any of any annotations. In this case, we have a helm.shs hook called post install. And we'll look for all of these uh, hooks and then deploy this stuff if needed. So it's not just about, say, writing the resources. My point with demonstrating or showing you this is that Helm provides you functionalities as a chart author to have more control over the life cycle of your chart. You can think up a lot of use cases for this. I want to show you one last thing, which is chart tests. So this is somewhat of a new functionality, uh, but similar to hooks, but they are invoked manually. So example tests. Basically, the point of these tests is to ensure that a, a release is working correctly. And there are many different types of things you could test uh, in, a, you know, in an application. It really depends. It's application specific. But in this, in this case, we take our application, which is like you know, we have a Redis thing and a, and a simple API server. What we might do is have a test that, OK, the uh, Redis container is up and can connect to it. The API server is up and we can connect to it. We can make the documents API requests, say this get request or whatever. Maybe test some other things. This could be even much more involved than simple things like this. You could have an entire uh, Docker image created to run a you know, f f fully integrated test suite across all components in a particular chart. So what you do is similar, uh, similar to uh, hooks. You define them in the same way, actually, with say uh, test success or test failure, and then you tell Helm to run a test on a particular uh, on a particular release. Now, the reason why this is so useful is that you can build this into a simple deploy script. So your deploy script might look something like Helm install. Then you, prob maybe you probably should have a hook in the post install, which will give some time for everything to actually start, right? Because installation is asynchronous. Just images have to be pulled maybe more replicas have to start. You know, it takes some time for all of the application to fully boot. So if you add that wait after a Helm install, and then you could say Helm test. And you can write a script that says, if Helm test, and it succeeds, then OK. If it fails, perhaps do a Helm rollback to the previous revision. Uh, unfortunately, we don't really have the structure right now to demonstrate tests in a, in a live fashion. But I wanted to show you the, the functionality that you have as a chart author. So as the chart author, you can control it with, you can predefine all of the default uh, parameters with the values file. You can uh, control the life cycle of the chart through the through hooks. And you can also control how the chart is tested with these chart tests together with the packaging and the repo management that Helm provides, all of these things together give you pretty much everything you need to build and deploy entire applications with Helm. 
Now, I cannot emphasize enough how important uh, Helm is becoming in terms of the Kubernetes ecosystem. Uh, it's getting, it's a very, very active project, and actually the uh, charts repository on the Kubernetes uh, GitHub org is actually one of the most active uh, repositories in the, in the organization. Uh, and more and more people are moving to deploying things with Helm for the reasons that I outlined uh, outlined so far. And if you are curious about uh, getting started with Kubernetes, then I highly recommend that you investigate Helm. If you're already using Kubernetes and maybe you've written your own sort of deploy thing or you're just actually keeping all of your you know, YAML files in source control somewhere and just calling a bunch of kubectl commands, then I highly recommend that you look into Helm. Regardless of where you are right now with your Kubernetes use, Helm should definitely be on your roadmap. And if you are curious about Helm, you can check in the docs folder. Unfortunately, all of their docs are still uh, in GitHub. But one very useful doc here is in related, which is presentations, examples, all sorts of uh, useful things uh, if you want to learn more about Helm, particularly things that are most interesting to me, and I think for most uh, application developers is continuous deployment or continuous delivery pipelines built with help. You'll find some examples here and also some other projects that make it kind of improve some of the workflows around, uh, around Helm. So that is all that I had to share with you uh, regarding Helm. Now I'm happy to go through and answer uh, and answer your questions. Okay. So first question: Is there any known Java API to use Kubernetes Helm? Something like create Kubernetes client from Fabricate? I'm trying to initial Helm commands from Java, but I can't find anything that actually works. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think there is any, I don't know for a fact, but I don't think that there are any API clients written in anything other than Go for Helm, and I don't think that there's actually any unofficial uh, implementations. So if you need something like that, you're probably going to have to go uh, and write it yourself. Uh, internally, I know that it uses uh, protobuf to talk back to Tiller, so it's somewhat similar uh, to how Kubernetes, uh, the Kubernetes API works, but unfortunately, probably going to have to write that yourself if you're in Java land. Next question. Is there any useful documentation about Helm which explains how it works and how to write extensions using it? So. The best documentation is in this docs folder that we're looking at right now, which is in GitHub. And I'm glad that you mentioned extensions. So Helm has the concept called plugins, which allow you to write your own commands uh, for the Helm, uh, the Helm CLI. Uh, you can do things like do, 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 do. Yeah, so this plugin integrates Helm chart signing with Keybase. This is one thing that I forgot to mention. Uh, Helm charts can actually be signed. So if you're dealing with signed packages right now with, say, like app or things like that, then this is a quite similar concept. So if you need to sign your packages and verify them before going, you know, before installing them, we can do that. So plugin is a way to create some of these commands, and this is the best documentation that we have uh, right now. Okay, next question. How to use a separate 
input history for Helm Swoop. I've not actually heard of Helm Swoop. If you are still in this, if you, the person who asked that question is still in the session, you can clarify that one in the chat. So I think that we are now at, no. okay. Here's one question that came in. Does Helm require more of a development knowledge or can infrastructure guys also work with this stuff? So I think that it doesn't really require any specific knowledge to work with Helm. If you can write YAML files, you can work with Helm. Uh, if you are currently deploying things to Kubernetes, you're writing YAML files. Uh, and that should give you enough to understand how to work with, uh, work with Helm. The only place where, quote, more infrastructural type knowledge would be required would be creating or uh, setting up the infrastructure for the, uh, uh, the Helm chart repository. So Helm uses a simple model for hosting their charts, or hosting charts. If you want to stand up your own repository for, say, charts that you build internally for your organization, a chart, or a chart repository is just a simple HTTP server that responds to get requests. So you might need some more infrastructural knowledge to provision that. But I don't think that any sort of specific kind of domain knowledge is required to work with Helm or work with uh, like write charts. Uh, so I think Helm is a tool for pretty much anyone who is using Kubernetes in really any kind of any kind of fashion. Point us to a more robust robust test example that does more than run the container. So. Let me come back here just to understand what the example was. So not necessarily quite sure what a more robust example uh, would look like because the structure is quite simple. Just depends on what sort of thing you're going to do in the test. So a a uh, Helm test is just a Kubernetes pod. And these commands might do any, any number of things. And this example, what it's doing is just testing the connection back to the database included in the release. But you might have a more complex image that could do all sorts of things. Um, it really just depends on what you put in the command and what you have, what you have in your image. So it's hard to create, or at least right now, to reference a more robust example off the top of my head. You have to write that one uh, yourself. Any last questions? OK. We can come back over here. So we've finished this. So I want to say thank you for all of you for attending the session. It's been a great time to share Helm with you uh, and hopefully give you some more information uh, to help you along in your Kubernetes journey. I know that uh, Kubernetes is uh, moving fast and is an ever-evolving technology, and Helm especially. Uh, and the best way to keep up to date and to understand what's going on is to talk to people and get involved. Coming to webinars like this is one way to do that. Uh, the other way to do that is to join the Kubernetes Slack channel. There's a, uh, a channel for Helm, which is uh, very active. The maintainers are quite active on there. There are many end users, like myself. I hang out there. 
that. So getting answers to your questions, talking to end users, uh, come hang out in the Kubernetes Slack. There is a great, great source of information. And even if you don't join the Helm, uh, the Helm channel, just joining that Slack team will help you so, so much along the way. And also, I will be posting a summary blog post of this webinar, and also providing written answers to the questions on the Cloud Academy community forum, if you want to check back there. And in the next session, we will be talking about a second tool called Chaos, which is more for uh, cluster provisioning uh, and management. So in the same way that Helm has made it easier for application developers to uh, package up their things and deploy them to Kubernetes, Chaos has made it easier to manage clusters to scale them and work with them from the cluster upside. So that's all I have for all of you. Uh, Thank you, thank you for joining, and I will see you next one. Good luck out there, and happy shipping.